thanks again, everyone. Um, my name is Kinchit Shah. I'm one of the practicing physicians uh, in, in the United States. So let's talk about USMLEs. And um, if you, if all of you who are watching this live or later on, if all of you are scared about these exams after this slide, and all of you are petrified about these exams after this slide, that is the exact purpose of me uh, telling you all of these things that I'm going to tell you for this slide. So if you are scared, I did my job. If you are uh, worried about USMLEs, then I did my job explaining you how important these exams are. Um, when we, um, and I, right now I can tell from this um, end of it because I interview candidates for the residency for my program. I interview candidates for, you know, residency um, pathway. So we give huge importance to USMLE scores. It is not simply pass or fail exam. Yeah, you definitely need to score high, as high as possible. There is no limit, sky is the limit, but um, you definitely need to aim high. Um, and if you have to take a reference point, you at least need to get 250 or 260 marks um, from the scoring system in USMLE exams. And those scoring system changes every year, depending on how many students are taking the exam. And that's a whole different lecture. Um, and most important thing I wanted to tell about these exams is please, please do not rush to take this test. Um, if you sit for this exam and if you fail, people can actually see it. I can actually see it that this guy has failed or this girl has failed uh, twice or once for step one, step two, or step three. So if you fail, then please be ready to explain when you apply for residency. Please be ready to explain when you go for residency interviews that why did you fail this test? Because it uh, impacts huge, uh, hugely negatively on your uh, residency application. Um, and I do encourage all of you to give this, uh, sorry, moving, going back. I do encourage all of you to take this USMLE step one. Step one, they say it's the most difficult. It is, is, it is a difficult test, but people find it most difficult is because they are not used to studying like this after, um, since 12th grade, since 12th standard. So that is why people find it very, very difficult, but it is not the case. Um, it is equal difficult as the rest of the USMLE exams. But I do encourage all of the students to give or to try to give this USMLE step one exam um, as early as possible when you decide that you are going down this pathway. And it is super, super ideal if you give this exam before you graduate your medical college because they do allow you to, uh, they, they do allow you to give this exam before you graduate. To give you some reference, People, uh, students who are doing medical college in um, US, they are giving this exam after the second year of their medical college. So you can imagine that if they are giving in their second year of the medical college out of four years, I do expect you, whoever decides to give this exam uh, at least in fourth to fifth year, just to you know put your chances higher than rest of the applicants. Um, and Soon after you finish this USMLE step one, which I hope that you finished by now with higher scores, since I told you how important these scores were. Since you finished this USMLE step one just recently, go ahead and take and schedule step two CK right after. Because you know why? You are studying, you are used to studying. Everything is fresh in your mind. And there is truly, truly huge, huge overlap between USMLE step one and step two. Before it used to be, step one used to be pre-medical or, you know, basic science knowledge like biology, um, you know, anatomy, physiology. Um, but now both of the exams are more clinical guided or, or clinical geared, um, which means to put, you, put in the perspective, they want you to use lecture from the anatomy class to use it to diagnose or treat somebody that is in front of you, like a patient. So there is a tremendous overlap between these two exams. So I do want you to give step two CK. Step two CK stands for clinical knowledge. And there used to be another step, which is called clinical skills. Hopefully, and it does not come back, but I, I heard last week that this exam called step two CS is now canceled, officially canceled by USMLE. So there is no more CS. 
by this, you already save $3,000 at least uh, by not having to give this exam because that is, that is how expensive step to CS was. And CS stood for clinical, uh, for clinical skills and CK stands for clinical knowledge. Step one is on the computer, is a theoretical test. Step two CK is on the computer as well. It is a theoretical test. And step two CS used to be live. They used to have fake patients, real human patients, but fake, faking a disease. And you used to um, have to treat them and diagnose them, but nobody has to worry about it anymore. And this is a great news for all of you. Um, as this says over here, study smart and hard. You know, you can sit in the library for nine to 10 hours and definitely fail step one. If you sit in library for nine to 10 hours for a year and did not really study or did not, could not really focus on studying, you can definitely fail step one. And then question starts, where are you deficient? What happened? Why did you fail? In your mind, in your, in, in your heart, you know where you are lacking. You know what did you do when you were sitting down to study. So please, please study smart and hard. If you are having a hard time sitting down for hours and hours, whatever, however many hours you are sitting in a day, like three to four hours, make the best out of it. Remember those days when you were studying for boards for 12th standard or for 10th standard. Put equal or more effort in giving this USMLE exams because yes, your life depends on it. But again, these are also expensive tests. So you don't want to pay thousands of dollars every time you are, you are failing this test because that's how much they cost. They cost around $995 or $950, $950 for each of these steps. Um, and I do encourage to all of you to form like a group or at least to form like like-minded uh, students who are doing the same preparation. For example, if you, know, if you have three or four your group mates or group mates or you know, students from your class or class before you, find like-minded people, find people that you are matching and you know, start studying or sharing the resources together. And a couple of resources that I have here for you to get all of you started is um, usmle-forums.com. And this is like a forum, uh, you know, any, like, any discussion forum, any discussion panel that we are going to have, this is online. Um, like, you know, written forum that you can ask questions and people who have done this before will answer your questions. Or maybe people from your class or people who are doing the same thing as you will answer your questions. So it is very extremely, extremely useful, um, you know, to go on these forums and, you know, just kind of look for your answers. If like, hey, you know, tomorrow, if somebody has question like, hey, you know, I forgot what Kinchit uh, said on this lecture, like, uh, what was the cost for CK again? Obviously you can check on the USMLE website, but if you have like you know, some other question, like what do I need to do? I'm getting this much score on my practice questions. Am I ready? Am I not ready? Share, the, share your concerns on these forums. You know, maybe you are coming to US, you need, you need like an apartment to rent, you need like a room to rent, put it out on this forum. Maybe people are staying in the same city as you. So it is tremendously useful at every single step of your journey. And I used, both of these forums so much that it guided me so much. And this was, you know, whatever I did was kind of, you know, self-taught and by talking to people who has done, who have done this before me. So that is why when Ashok asked me, Hey, can you give this lecture? I jumped on it because I want you all to get started early enough. Um, so that way you, you don't have to waste years like I did, but maybe, you know, and whatever years you spend studying, you will spend, smartly you will spend intelligently without wasting your time um, and i do um, you know wanted to tell you all that this usmle exams usmle step one exams step two ck exams step three exams they all are question based that is big question and there are a few uh, possible choices possible answer choices and you have to select the best possible answer all of those choices are right there is no wrong choice but you have to select the best possible choice best possible answer so it's multiple choice uh, exams like MCI, but you do need to practice heavily for this question before you appear for the real exam. And you do need to practice as much as you can. If you find question from somebody, like somebody is doing Kaplan question bank and somebody sh is willing to share their uh, question bank with you, do them. Do as many questions as you can. More, uh, more questions you will do, 
better prepared you will be for these tests. Um, and that is shown historically, the better scores if you practice as many questions as possible, because you're gonna be studying theory all the time from the books. Where are you getting to test your knowledge? So this is where you will get to test your knowledge. Um, there is one um, subscription online called USMLE World. And there's also official USMLE uh, people who make the USMLE exams. They are called NBME, uh, National Board of Medical Examiners. And they have their own websites called nbme.org. If you go on this website, just before you are about to appear for step one or step two um, CK exam, go ahead, take this practice test on this exam. And that will tell you how much you will score approximately in the real exam. Um, so that gives you some, some preparedness if you know to tell you that if you're ready to give this exam or not. And do not sit down for this USMLE exams without taking test, self-assessment test on this NBME website. Because if you fail the NBME ex um, you know, self-assessment exam, then chances are very high that you may not do well on USMLE exams. So you know, just to save yourself trouble in the future, because you know, like I said again, um, just a few minutes ago, that failures do affect your chances very adversely. So do not rush to take this test. So here are your tools for you to practice some questions. And there are some coaching classes like we have for MCI exams, you know, for USMLE also, it's a huge, huge, um, you know, uh, market for this coaching classes. So any of the classes that you have been recommended, you can definitely take them. And now with COVID, everything is virtual. So you can take the benefit of live virtual classes. Um, and some example of the companies who offer classes are Kaplan. I did Kaplan classes, but that does not mean that you all have to do Kaplan classes. These are just one example of the coaching classes that are that are available for you for USMLEs. <music>